Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have coastal skeletons for you today. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell to be notified when I post, and the thumbs up is very much appreciated. Okay, the first DIY we're going to do today is just a thrift flip sign. I got this wood sign at the thrift store for 99 cents and it's made out of real wood. So it's super heavy and it's the perfect size for what I want to do. I want to do a hand painted sign. So my first step is to cover up all of that writing that was on my original sign. And the black and the red was a lot to cover. So I think it did take two or three coats of the ivory chalk paint by Waverly to cover up that on the side. And the sides are already white, so those are ready to go. What I want to do is I want to make a little coastal skeleton sign to go with these great skeletons that I found at the Dollar Tree the other day. So I thought I could make a sign that's just going to go above the skeletons on a little shelf. Now this is the color I want the sign to be. This is the Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly. It's this beautiful beachy color of blue. And I'm definitely going for a coastal vibe on all of my projects today. So I'm just going to go in and paint one coat of that agave on my white base coat and we are going to be ready to go. I'm going to do a hand painted sign and so I go to my Cricut design space and I cut out a stencil. I get this stencil paper on Amazon. It's really good. I will post a link below. Um, I typed in the word evil under pictures and found an evil that I liked. It cut itself out because my son had my Cricut on my wrong setting. But um, I'm just going to weed the rest of the picture. I found these great skeletons on the Cricut Design Space. It's the classic, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And you'll see here in a minute why I chose this design. And I'm going to put evil on the top and then the skeletons on the bottom. Now these skeletons were very detailed. So I did have to go in um, Cricut Design Space and use the contour function to cut out a lot of the little tiny dots that were just gonna be impossible, but to leave the basic bones and stuff like that. And I'm just going to apply that stencil to my sign using some of this paper, transfer paper. I get this on Amazon as well too, and it works really well. Yeah, my son had uh, my Cricut set to cardstock and I didn't realize it. And so like it cut all the way through this, but that's okay. I don't have to weed it. <laughs> it wasn't too nice to the skeletons though. So I'm just going to line this up. My stencil on the top here. I'm going to have it say evil. And then I'm going to have those skeletons underneath of it. I think that'll be cute. And I want to paint all of that on there with that ivory chalk paint by Waverly. So we're going to have a nice beachy blue and white sign. So just using that same piece of transfer paper, it works so good you can even reuse it. And just lining that up and pressing my stencil down. And we are ready to start painting this little skeleton sign. I'm gonna use a little bit of painter's tape to cover any areas at the top there that are exposed so I don't make any mistakes. And then I'm just gonna go in with um, one of those little sponge stencil daubers from the Dollar Tree and use that ivory chalk paint by Waverly and go all over these. I don't want it to be like um, a perfect hand painted sign. Otherwise I might've put Mod Podge down first. I want it to look rustic. I want it to look very coastal. So I'm trying to get fairly good coverage here on my skeletons and on the word evil. And once I get a good coat, I'm gonna go in with my heat gun and dry that. I didn't notice that some of the paint um, cracked um, on the skulls, which actually looked kind of cool. So I kind of liked it. I kind of left it. So once I get that good and dry, then I can just remove my stencil and we're going to have our little hand painted sign. And it turned out pretty good. There's the word evil and our little skeletons. 
I do have to go in and just weed out the little pieces of vinyl that are still in there to expose my little skeleton's faces. Yeah, these skeletons had teeth and everything, so I did have to um, remove a lot of stuff. The contour function on my computer, though, is so slow that it's almost unusable. Do you have that problem as well with your Cricut Design Space? My computer's fairly new, so I just don't know why it's so slow. So just touching up any mistakes I made there, and we have our evil sign, and this is why I made it. Look at these skeletons that I found at the Dollar Tree. I don't have to do anything to them. They're perfect. And I'm going to put this sign up on a little shelf. I got this little shelf at a three pack from the Target Dollar Spot. It's a great riser. And then I decided, ooh, I need a little more distressing. So I'm gonna go in there with just um, a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and that those colors that we use, the ivory and the agave, and just weather it a little bit and make it look a little bit beachier. And that is all there is to that project. I love those little skeletons that I found at the Dollar Tree. They're so cute. I've only seen them there once, so I may have gotten lucky. Okay, the next project is we're gonna do a little beach scene for our skeletons. So I'm using this frame that I got at the Dollar Tree, um, and I'm going to just paint over the words and the picture of the cactus and just this cashew color just to cover that up because I plan on filling this with sand. It's a frame that just has a paper picture so there's no glass or anything like that. And I think it's gonna make the perfect little sandbox for my little beach scene. Um, Cause it has sides so it'll help keep the sand in there as well. I got these cute little beach chairs at the toy department at Dollar Tree. And they kind of, they're the perfect color but I'm just gonna kind of distress them a little bit with ivory and a chunky brush just to try to make them look a little bit more like wood. And these are gonna be the little beach chairs for our little skeleton family that are gonna be having a little beach day. I had so much fun putting this together. It's so cute. And it goes really well with my haunted beach house. These are the little skeletons that I'm gonna use. Um, you get four on a garland and I am just gonna cut those off the string. And I end up only needing um, three of them for this project. And my plan is to have like two of them sitting in the little beach chairs and one of the skeletons playing in the sand. So once I get that coat of brown, you'll notice I didn't go all the way to the edges. I'm just doing that so you won't be able to see riding through the sand. And first I'm gonna attach the beach chair so they'll be good and secure to the base before I put the sand on in our little sandbox. I'm using um, just this white sand from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna attach it with just school glue. So I'm gonna put down a pretty heavy coat of school glue and just wipe that with a little sponge brush. And then I'm gonna go in and put my little skeleton here because I'm going to have him playing in the sand like he's buried in the sand. So I go ahead and glue him down where I want him and then I'm going to bury him. So I'm just going to spread that sand everywhere where I put glue and put a pretty good coat down. I did have to use more sand on this project than I usually do so I don't know how well this project will store. It might be okay. It has hardened up a little bit. And I'm just making sure I get a good coat everywhere. Starting to bury my little skeleton in the sand a little bit. And this sand is really fine. It's kind of the wider sand, um, but it's really easy to work with. And so he's looking pretty good and buried. Just gonna clean up the sand off my chairs there and then I'm gonna use some of this multi-purpose spray glue from the Dollar Tree and spray that on top of the sand to help glue that down. And the combination of those two types of glue really help you to put um, sand on signs and stuff like this. Now, since I have that glue on there, I'm gonna do a very thin layer of more sand until I get it kind of just the way I like it. 
I want his body to be buried, but maybe like have some ribs stick it out, his hands, his feet. I, if I would have had a smaller skeleton too, it would have even looked more like a kid. So it was super cute. But these were the smallest ones I could find and they were pretty much the perfect size. So just spraying with that with some more glue to make sure that that sand is good and stuck down. And then I'm gonna have his and her, like mom and dad skeletons here in the beach chairs, sitting like that. Um, I thought they needed a little pumpkin. So I'm gonna use one of these little white pumpkins that's on a pick or a wire from the Dollar Tree. They come like in a four pack and I am just going to paint that and that pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly. So we'll have a little pumpkin. I like to throw in a little bit of Halloween here and there on this, even though the skeletons are pretty obvious. And once I get that painted, I'm also gonna do a beach ball. So I'm gonna use one of these ping pong balls from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna use some of my paint pens. I got these paint pens on Amazon and they are a great selection of colors. I will post a link below for those as well. I absolutely love them. The only problem is, is that I ran out of the white. I wish I could just buy another white one. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the standard uh, colors of a beach ball with like the red, the blue, the yellow, and the white quadrants. I'm just kind of free handing that on to our little ping pong ball and I thought that would give it a nice beach vibe having a beach ball there with our little skeleton playing on the beach and so I got the red and the blue and now I'm just going in and doing the yellow the only tricky part of this was trying not to mess up the paint while I was still uh, painting it And I'm just gonna give that a dry with my heat gun and we have a little beach ball and our pumpkin. Now, I thought that the mom and dad skeletons needed swimsuits. So the only kind of orange fabric I had, I really wanted to do orange because I thought that was very Halloween, is one of these like car chamois from the Dollar Tree. I'm like, eh, well it works. It's kind of like a really thick felt. So I just cut a pair of shorts for the dad skeleton and then I'm just attaching those to themselves with hot glue to make little swim trunks for my little skeleton. They're not great, the swimsuits, but they'll do. And then I'm just gonna use some hot glue to attach him down to his seat. If I could have figured out a way to make sunglasses for these guys, I totally would have, but man, they were small. I have no idea how I could do that. Now I'm gonna make a swimsuit for the mom skeleton. And I kind of just do like a double triangle and kind of put that together, kind of like a diaper, trying to make like a swimsuit bottom for her. And then I'm gonna make her like a bikini top using that same fabric. So I just cut a couple little triangles and then I cut like just a little strip to um, put those together, like a little bikini. And I glue that all together. And then I'm gonna glue that to the ribs of the little skeleton. And then I'm gonna go in and cut another strip of that chamois. And that's gonna be like the strap on the top of the little bikini. And they have their little swimsuits. <laughs> I had so much fun putting this project together. My son got quite a kick out of it too. So once I have her good and dressed, I can go ahead and hot glue her to her seat so she doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm going to try to make some surfboards. So I have some of these giant um, popsicle sticks from Walmart and I'm just using scissors to try to cut them more in a pointy shape to try to make them look a little bit more like a surfboard. I kind of cut them two different heights because I'm gonna use both halves to make two surfboards for our um, little skeleton family. And then I thought I would glue them like that right next to each other, like they were buried halfway in the sand behind their chairs. So now all I have to do is give them a little sanding and then I can go ahead and paint my little surfboards. 
I kept thinking they didn't really look like surfboards, but good enough. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the smaller one in this pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly. And then I'm going to do the larger one in ink, which is the black chalk paint by Waverly. Just easy peasy to paint those. And then I'm gonna do this little beach sign that I have from like the fairy stuff this summer um, from the Dollar Tree and then kind of put that pumpkin in between them. And then I'm just using a Sharpie and I'm just gonna put a very simple jack-o'-lantern face on this surfboard. I thought that would be a nice little touch of Halloween and bring in a little bit more orange to our little beach scene. And then on the black surfboard, I'm just gonna use a white paint pen and I'm just gonna write on it and I'm gonna write bad to the bone. I thought that sounded like a fun expression for a skeleton surfer. And again, I hate this, chalk, this, this paint pen. I got it at Walmart, it's not very good. I just ordered some more, so hopefully. I must use white an awful lot. Then I'm just gonna attach those to the little lip of that frame side by side with just a little bit of hot glue. And they fill in that nice um, empty space back there nicely. And then I just have to decorate a little bit more with my beach ball and then a couple of my tiny seashells for my stash. And then I'm just gonna attach all of those to the sand with just a little dab of hot glue. And then I need to glue down that little pumpkin. And what do you guys think? I think it's so much fun. <laughs> I love it. Okay, my next project, I want to make three different signs to do like a coastal skeleton scene. Now, I'm gonna use some of these paint trays from the Dollar Tree. It's a great deal. You can get like uh, the roller, you get a brush, you get the paint tray, you get gloves all for a dollar. And so it's great because you can just um, throw them away when you're done. Now I'm gonna use three of the long signs from the Dollar Tree. I had two of these Beware ones, which were exactly the same size, which I really needed. I'm just gonna cover the sign with all the glitter and stuff on there with some of this cheap contact paper from the Dollar Tree that looks like wood, but it doesn't matter what kind. And I'm cutting two strips because both of those signs are the same. And then that welcome sign is the same height, but it's a tiny bit wider than the beware signs. And then I'm gonna use that contact paper just to cover everything on the back of that sign and it will be good to go. Um, I didn't quite get it exactly the right size, so I'm just using a sanding block to go around the edges and tear off any excess vinyl that's still on there, just to clean it up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, the back of those two signs, and I'm just using my heat gun and a scraper to get that tag off, and we have a perfect base for our sign. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on sign number two. And the third sign, I was actually able to do something different, but you'll be able to see that as well. So just getting that one cleaned up and I'm gonna get those two signs ready to paint. And you can see I'm going to paint them that ivory there in the chalk paint. And this is the third sign. The paper was really loose on this welcome sign. And it's got the rope like stapled into the back. And so I just pulled almost all of it off with no nothing. And then I'm just using heat and a scraper to get the little remaining piece of paper off there. And now I don't have to cover the back. I can just use the front of that sign. And that is super easy. I love it when that paper actually comes off. So sign number one, I'm gonna do in this ivory chalk paint. I'm gonna leave the holes on there because I'm gonna have all these signs hanging vertically, um, side by side by side. I'm gonna do a set and I'm just getting a good coat on there. It's really easy to paint the back of those signs. And I do the same exact thing to the other sign that I painted ivory as well. Just touching them up, making sure that none of the brown is showing through. And those two signs are ready to go. What I'm gonna put on those signs are skeletons. And then in the middle sign, I'm gonna paint this agave color 
and I'm going to have like a hand painted sign on this one. So it's going to be like a matching set on our wall. So this is the one that I pulled the paper off of. So I'm just going to leave the rope on there and just paint the top of it in this agave color. And this is definitely going to match that first sign I made, that evil sign, because I'm going to do an agave with a white hand painted sign on there. I got these little wooden skeletons at the Dollar Tree. One of them is broken, but that's okay. I can fix it, I think. <laughs> so I'm making sure that I can fix it. And I'm going to attach these wooden skeletons to my little ivory signs that we made. And I think they'll be super cute. But first, I want to make them that beautiful color of agave blue. So I'm kind of testing that. And then I want to fill in the little holes on the top of the schools with just a little bit of spackle. And then I went to paint them and then I was like, what am I going to do here? Because they're all attached by these little metal rings, which I didn't really need them to be. So I just go in here and I completely dismantled both of the skeletons just by pulling the, the wire rings off. They were super easy to bend and remove. I thought that's going to make it way easier to paint all these little bones because I want them all to be that blue agave color. My plan here is to make a his and hers skeleton. And you'll see why here in just a little bit. So the arm bones, like the top arm bones and the top leg bones are exactly the same size. So I'm just kind of lining those all up. We got our hands, we got our legs, and we got our heads. And I'm just going to go in there with my roller from the Dollar Tree and give everybody a good coat of that agave chalk paint. And I'm not going to use those rings again to reattach. I'm actually just going to attach all of these little skeleton pieces to our sign. So once I get all of those bones painted, the only thing I have left to paint is the little rib cages for both of those skeletons. I think I was just getting a few drips there from in between some of the fingers. And so let's get a paint on the skeletons and the hip bones are kind of connected together. And I really like the skeleton. I love that it's wood. You could stain it too. Um, I, it's so much prettier than the plastic skeletons. And now I'm just kind of lining up to see how the skeleton will fit on my long sign. And it looks like it's going to be nice. There's going to be room at the top and the bottom a little bit. And I can glue almost everything on there except for maybe the arms. So I'm just kind of laying that out to kind of picture what I'm going to do with it. And I'm going to go ahead and glue down the first skull. And while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the second one as well. Lining them up side by side because I want to make sure the skeleton is at the same height for both of them. And that was an easy fix on the broken skeleton for sure. But look at those things before you buy them. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and attach my rib cage and my hips. Now, I'm not using those wire rings to reattach all these bones together. I'm just leaving a space between them. And I thought about doing rope, but I thought this was the easiest. And I really kind of like the abstract way that it did turn out. So I'm going to have this guy kind of stand in with his feet kind of going in. It's going to fit on this sign nicely. And then I'm going to go in and do the other one the same way. I do um, make them have different arm positions just to switch it up a little bit. You can do your skeleton in any position you want. You can have them dancing. And so I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out the arms. They're definitely going to have to hang off. So I thought I would use some of those wire rings, but only on the elbows just to keep those two pieces of the arms together. And I'm going to have this one be like my male um, skeleton. I'm just going to have him have his hands kind of on his hips and just attaching the bits of the arm that I can to the sign. And it hangs off like that. Now, this skeleton, I want to do the arms like a little different. Maybe this skeleton is dancing. 
So have one hand on the hip, maybe one hand up in the air. And I thought that was fun to mix up the skeletons and make them a little bit different. So I'm just using the rings to attach them at the elbows again and gluing on the shoulder and the hand. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the um, arm here that I'm gonna have straight up. The finger kind of goes a wacky direction when you do that, but that's okay, who cares? And we have both of our skeletons secure on our little white signs. Now you know I have to distress it, so I'm going in with some ivory chalk paint and a chunky brush and just slightly distressing all over on both of my blue skeletons just to give them a little bit more of a coastal vibe. And I really like how these turned out. The three of them together like really represents like a really large art piece on my wall. Like they replaced a painting that I normally have hanging there and they look so cute together. So just giving a little distress on this skeleton as well. And these signs are about ready to go. I thought about adding some seashells, but I kind of like the simplicity of these and the color is very coastal as it is. I'm gonna use those existing holes on the top and just use some twine from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just using my little Cricut weeder to poke a hole in that um, vinyl on the back. And I like to tie my ties on the front. I find that they hang flatter against the wall like that. And you have to be careful with these thin signs from the Dollar Tree. They like to warp. Once I painted them the ivory color, they both kind of warped and I kind of set them on something circular where it kind of bowed down in the middle and they actually straightened out before they dried. And I'm just using a little flame to burn off any excess fibers using one sign to measure the other sign to make sure that I get the little hangers the same. And the other sign already had a hanger on it and so I don't need to make one for it. And I'm just measuring it because I'm gonna make a stencil to make a hand painted sign on this one as well. But I gotta distress it a little bit so I'm just going all in one direction with a chunky brush and a baby wipe. Now this is the stencil that I made on um, Cricut Design Space. I will post below the fonts that I used if you want to use them yourself. The first word, uh, till, I did with this like cobweb print that is super cool, but it was actually kind of hard, even as big as I made this. So I was struggling um, to make sure the little tiny triangles were staying down there on my stencil when I pulled out my letters. And what this little stencil is going to say is, till death do us part. I thought that was really funny with the little male and the husband and the wife skeleton. And I had a lot of fun with this. So the, so the till has the little cobwebs on each one of the letters. The next word that I did was death. And I just went in Cricut Design Space and typed in death under images. And it came up with this cool death like in a coffin and I thought that was cooler than anything I could design and then so till death do us part and then I did part like in a script font just to make it look a little different than the rest of them and so this is ready to go it's such a long stencil that I did have to cut it in my two foot cutting mat and then I'm just using that paper transfer paper that I love to attach my stencil to my sign so we can do a hand painted sign. I think that stencils are my favorite thing about owning a Cricut. I wish I would have bought a Cricut a long time ago. I got mine for Christmas last year for my husband and my son and oh my goodness, I love it for hand painted signs. There's nothing better. So once I get that down, I'm gonna carefully peel off my transfer paper trying to make sure that everything stays down that's supposed to. And I'm trying not to get like any big gaps that's gonna interfere with our paint job. But again, this is gonna be coastal, so if there are mistakes, I'll just try to make them look like they were done on purpose. Just making sure it is tight and down around all the letters and then I'm just going to mark off the extra pieces there with some painters tape so I don't get any paint on them and again I'm just going to use a roller on this since it's such a big sign 
and use that ivory chalk paint and just go over my stencil vinyl with that chalk paint. And I did not use the Mod Podge again because it's okay if I have a little bleeding. It's just gonna make it look a little bit more coastal. And once I dry that with my heat gun, I can take off my painter's tape and peel off this stencil. And I did really good. The only bleeding I really had was um, on the side of my coffin and maybe on a letter or two. And I'm just weeding off the excess vinyl from my stencil. Again, I like that cobweb font. I don't know if I would use it again though, because it was a little tricky. And I did end up use, like losing at least one little triangle there. <laughs> and I also got this little scrap collector on Amazon as well too for my vinyl. And I like it, it's got little slits where you can put your little weeder in there and it will clean it off for you. But I'm just throwing my big chunks of vinyl in there with my finger. And there we have it, till death do us part. I'm just gonna sand that down a little bit. I do have a little bleeding on the right side of that coffin. So I'm just gonna go in there with um, some of that agave and a chunky brush and distress it and kind of make it look like it's done on purpose. And then I'm gonna distress all of those ivory letters with that agave, just to make it look a little bit more coastal. And I absolutely love how these three signs turned out together. My son really got a kick out of it. I can't wait for my husband to see it in the morning. I'm sure he'll get a nice chuckle. So this is how I'm gonna do them. One skeleton on each side, but I wanna make one a girl. So I'm gonna use one of these bows that I just got on clearance at Walmart but I don't want it to cover like her whole head. So I'm just gonna cut the tails off of it. It's a perfect colors. It's like light blue and burlap and nice and beachy. I'm just gonna attach that with a little bit of hot glue just to make the skeleton a girl. Okay, look at this. I'm gonna do a mermaid skeleton. Can you believe that they have mermaid skeletons at the Dollar Tree? I was so excited. Oh my gosh. So what I'm gonna try to do is just make a little shadow box using this thrift flip that I got at the Goodwill store for $2.99, I think. It's a nice, big, heavy wood sign. And I'm gonna do the same trick I do on Dollar Tree signs where I'm just gonna cover the back, which was, was the front, with contact paper. And look at this, I was so excited I bought three of them. I can't believe it, because like last year I had to pay $20 for a skeleton mermaid from the Halloween store. Now my shadow box, I'm gonna do in that agave color, and you know your girl uses this color all the time. I'm almost out of it again. I'm gonna have to go to Walmart. And I am just going over all of the surfaces that are gonna be visible. So the sides, it's gonna be like just a little shadow box without like, I'm not gonna put glass on it or anything, but I just wanna do a cool little mermaid scene. But I do need a nice coat of blue to kind of represent the ocean. And this project turned out kind of creepy, kind of cool. My son kind of gave me inspiration for this. He really has the best ideas. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going over the black paint, but I don't really care if some of it shows through. I'm just gonna do one good coat of that chalk paint and that should be good to go. I'm just making sure that I have even coverage all over. And that is just one of those brushes that came with that roller kit in the, from the Dollar Tree as well. And my plan is to kind of just lay my little skeleton in there. She's not very poseable, so I think she'd be in there kind of nicely like that. I wish I could pose her arm, but I didn't really want to break it off. <laughs> so then I was thinking, oh, I've got good things. I'm going to use Spanish moss and reindeer moss to kind of make it look like the bottom of the ocean. But first, the skeleton had a tiny bit of shininess to it that kind of made it look cheap and plastic. So I'm just gonna go over it with just some matte spray paint just to make it look um, a little bit more skeletal and a little less shiny. And then this is my plan is to cover like maybe half of it in Spanish moss. It's that like creepy kind of moss and then the rest is this reindeer moss I'm gonna do in this bright green color. 
and I'm just trying to simulate like the bottom of the ocean. So I'm gonna attach a Spanish moss with just a bunch of hot glue to get a good layer. And I'm not kind of doing half and half, I'm kind of doing diagonals to kind of make it blend in. I use the whole package of the reindeer moss and maybe a third of the package of the Spanish moss. You get a lot of that in there at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just attaching all of my reindeer moss down with that hot glue. And then those little white flowers I got there at the Target Dollar Spot the other day, I thought those looked very like bottom of the ocean kind of a feel, which is what I kind of thought when I bought them the other day. <laughs> so I'm trying to make sure that I get all of the paint covered there on the bottom. And we'll have our little skeleton laying kind of like this. And so I'm just gonna cut off um, like six or seven of these little flowers. And I'm just gonna attach those here and there with some hot glue try to represent like a gnarly like bottom of the ocean where we have a skeleton of a mermaid laying all creepy like <laughs> and then I went and got my stash which is my treasure table outside on my Florida room where I put all my treasures that I find at the ocean and I found some coral and I'm just going to piece that coral together over here in the corner to kind of make it look like a coral reef this is like a really shelly coral. It's got a nice texture. And then I'm gonna use those little flowers to kind of cover up the gap in between the two, kind of like they're growing out of the side of our coral. And then I also got some of this like red uh, seaweed from my stash from my table. And I'm just attaching that down with a little bit of hot glue to bring a little variety to the background. And I think she looks pretty. I tried to do eyes, but they were a little too big and a little too creepy. So I decided against that and just left her open eye sockets. But then I was like, my mermaid needs hair. <laughs> so I didn't have anything to make hair with. So I am just using some raffia from the Dollar Tree and making some crazy straw looking hair. And this looks cool. It looks a little scary. So I measure out just enough to go um, down both sides and then I attach that to the top of my skeleton head with just some hot glue kind of pulling it down on the sides it's okay if she doesn't have um, very much on the back because she's gonna be attached down I'm gonna glue her head down right here inside our little mermaid shadow box and I'm glad that I gave her hair I think that looks cool and then I'm gonna attach her down with a bunch of hot glue so that she doesn't fall out because I'm going to display this up on its side. And we are going to have a super creepy, super cool little mermaid. I can't wait for my son to see this because he definitely inspired me on this. So just fixing her hair. Then I go through my stash and find a bunch of little shells that I think would be good. Some of the like not very good um, shells that I found, just kind of the creepier the better, kind of goes with the vibe of this little mermaid shadow box. What do you guys think? I think it turned out really fun. And I'm just gonna sit it on its side like that. And I'm just giving it a little haircut and she's ready. Okay, final reveal time. Here is our hand-painted evil sign. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil with our great skeletons that I get at the Dollar Tree. And there they are next to my haunted beach house, which is from a previous video. If you haven't seen that yet, that sea monster cracks me up. Here's our little skeletons enjoying their day at the beach and celebrating Halloween while they're at it. And we've got surfboards. We've got a little guy here buried in the sand. And I had so much fun putting this project together. And I hope you like it. Put it next to our shark school that we got at the Halloween store the other day. Isn't that thing cool? Every year we get a new one. And here is our Till Death Do Us Part three-piece wall hanging with our little his and her skeleton. 
and I love the blue and the white. I think it goes great with my coastal beach house. And that saying kind of cracks me up on there with my little his and her skeletons. And here's our creepy little mermaid laying on the bottom of the ocean. And this little shadow box using mermaid skeleton from the Dollar Tree. I can't believe they had mermaid skeletons at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited. Which project was your favorite? Please comment below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I appreciate you. Happy Halloween, everyone.